Hello, Alex here from the PyLand development team. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a simple level for PyLand. Now I'm using Ubuntu here, but this tutorial also applies to other Linux distributions, and of course, to the Raspberry Pi itself. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is to download and install the Tiled Map Editor. This is the program we use for specifying the layouts of maps in PyLand. You can get this here at mapeditor.org slash download or we can install it using the terminal. So just type sudo apt-get install tiled. Now that tiled's installed, let's create our own level. So open up the PyLand game folder. Here I've got it in my documents. We want to go to the levels folder and find the template. Let's duplicate this and give it our own level name. I'll call it tutorial level. Now, if we look inside this, you'll see there's a layout.tmx file and a script.py. The tmx file is what we use in tiled for specifying the tiles for the map. And the script is the functionality for the level that we program with Python. If you want to put your level inside a different folder, such as a world folder, you need to open the original layout file in Tiled and then do File Save As to the new location. This is because of the way image paths are stored in the TMX file, but in this case it's okay because tutorial level and template are in the same directory. So now we can open our new level in Tiled. You can do this from the terminal by typing Tiled and pressing Enter, or we can get it from the dock. And now we can open up our map for our level. It is here in PyLand, Levels, Tutorial Level, and Layout.tmx. So here it is, as you can see, it's a pretty simple template level. We've just got the player, a crocodile, some water, some trees, and some grass. Up here we've got the different layers, and down below we've got the tile sets. So first I'll show you the layers. You can show and hide layers using the tick boxes next to them. So here we've got the foreground and ground. These are the visual layers. These layers are only there for display purposes. They don't actually have any effect when you play the level. As you can see, the foreground layer is on top of the ground layer, and this is because of the way the layers are organized and tiled. You can change this using the arrows down below. And now we'll add a path to the map. So we go to paths, choose the path you want, and then simply click on the map and it will place that tile down on the layer you've got selected. So now I'm just going to make this whole path. And I'm going to add some more water. Okay, so now I'm just going to change the colour of the grass tiles in the background. We can do this by going to ground, selecting the grass tile you want, and then use this fill tool up here to change all of the tiles. And finally, I'll just add a few polishes to make the level look a bit more interesting. Okay, so these are the visual layers. You can call these whatever you want. Now let's move on to the special layer. This layer has to be called special layer, exactly as it is spelt here. But don't worry, because this is already in the template map that you've just copied. So if we show this, you'll see it's got these red and these blue tiles. These tell the game what tiles players can walk onto. So let's have a look in the tile set under special. We've got these red tiles, blue tiles, and yellowish tiles. The red ones signify that a player cannot move onto that space. The blue tile specifies that it is a water tile, which means that certain characters will interact differently, such as crocodiles which will swim, and players also can't walk onto this tile. And then we've also got the quicksand. So here we want to place some more blue tiles down because we've extended the water. And let's also make it so you can't walk onto these logs. So we'll use the red tile and just place them on top of the logs. And we also need to make it so you can't walk outside of these trees. So let's just draw the boundary and then use the fill tool to fill in the rest. Okay, so now we're done with the special layer. I can show you the object layer. 
This is where we had the player and the crocodile. We can get more information on the object in the map by going to the objects tab. Now, if you're on the Raspberry Pi and you don't see this objects tab, then you're probably using an older version of Tiled. In which case, just select the object layer under layers and then right click on an object in the map. And from here, select object properties and then you can see the name and you can change it. Okay, let's just expand this object layer. You'll see it's got the two objects here. We've got the player and we've also got this crocodile here. These paths correspond to the objects in Python. So let's try and add our own. The first thing you need to do is to select a tile to place down. Now, it doesn't actually matter which tile you pick because the image that's used in the game is specified by this path. So you can just place any image you want. For the purposes of this, I'll just use the MPC sprite. To place it down, select this image tool here and hold control down and left click to place it on the grid. If you accidentally click without pressing control and you place it off a tile, this won't actually work in the game. So what you want to do is to select the sprite and make sure you hold down control and then snap it into place, just like this. But we don't want this object, so I'll just remove this one. So if we click on the NPC we just added, you'll see here we can give it a path. So as I said, this corresponds to the Python object. So let's look in the PyLand game folder. If we go to objects, you'll see here we've got all the objects you can use for your game. So you'll find player in characters, player, and similarly, we've got the crocodiles under objects, characters, enemies, crocodiles, and then green crocodile. So let's try and add an NPC. This is under characters, NPCs, and let's use generic. So we simply type the path of the object into tiled here. So it's characters, NPCs, generic. And the last part of the path is the name we want to give to the object that you'll use in the scripts. Now it doesn't matter what you call it as long as it's unique and you remember to use it in your levels. So we'll just call this npc underscore one and hit enter. Now when PyLand loads it, it will know to get the generic npc and put it into the game. And all the pre-programmed functionality from PyLand is already there built into the npc. Okay, so now that we've finished our simple level, let's make sure to save the map and now let's try and open it in PyLand. So let's go to PyLand and let's run it. You can load your maps from the start screen here. We simply use the load underscore map command and type in the path of the map relative to the levels folder. So we simply called it tutorial underscore level. As you can see, let's just double check PyLand levels and it's right here, tutorial underscore level, great. So now if we run this, it will load our level. And here it is. So as you can see, we can move the player around with the arrow keys. It's all working now. We can go and talk to this NPC. He's got some pre-built in response. It just says hello there. And we can also yell at this crocodile, which is in the level. The functionality is all there in the object scripts. We just simply had to add them to the map. So here we can yell at the crocodile. And that concludes this simple tutorial on how to build PyLand levels. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been useful for you. There will be future videos showing you how to script your own levels and add more advanced features. But that's it for now. Now if you've had any problems, don't hesitate to contact us. Just leave us a message and we'll be sure to try and help you out. And if you want more updates on PyLand, just follow us on Twitter. We are at Project PyLand. And that's it for now. Thank you.